both both Stellantis are, and BYD are dismissing that there's any acquisition talks going down. But it's weird because BYD, well, they did visits. They did visits to plants. Uh, they've meet, been meeting with people at Stellantis. They've been checking out the plants for Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram. I would be very surprised if Stellantis would ever sell Jeep or Ram, but Dodge and Chrysler could very well be sold. You know, Chrysler is essentially just the Pacifica right now. And Dodge, the models aren't selling all that well. So BYD could either partner up or flat out buy out because that would be a backdoor into the US market. Because right now, Chinese vehicles that are coming in, it looks like the US politicians and Canadian politicians are going to make sure there's 100% tariffs on those vehicles. So you're not going to buy a Chinese vehicle if it's the same price or more than their U.S. made vehicle. So we're going to see what happens with this story. But I'd say it's, got either, it's either going to be a flat out acquisition or some sort of partnering up the way Volkswagen and Ford work together. They're now, you know, they share things. So Ford has Volkswagen platforms. Volkswagen will have Ford platforms so that Volkswagen can build a truck off the Ranger platform. This type of sharing, partnering up, is going down. And companies are needing to more, so, more and more so do that for, uh, to, to survive. For example, Ford's losing money on electric vehicles, but don't be surprised if down the road your Ford vehicle is going to be advertising to you. So for dollars to, to help keep the, the revenues up, to keep the profits flowing, don't be surprised if your Ford is going to be, and this could be actually, if it's done well, it could be really great. If it's done poorly, it will be horrific. But your vehicle essentially would be like, oh, Johnny, would you like to go for your, and I don't, I don't go to any particular coffee places. I get at home when I do make coffee, but let's say I did. Well, say, would you like to, there's a special on your coffee at your coffee shop that you normally like to go to. Would you, would you like us to put that in the GPS? That's if it's done well. If it's done poorly, it'll be like driver assist technology where it can be extremely helpful or extremely annoying. So what's going down with uh, the BYD? Well, the BYD officials recently visited several key Stellantis facilities in North America. And this is according to the Chrysler Technical Center in, sorry, they did visit the Chrysler Technical Center in Auburn Hills, Michigan, the Brampton and Windsor assembly plants in Canada and the Chelsea Proving Grounds. So either a partnership or an acquisition because then they could build, you know, Chinese designed vehicles. But if they're assembled here in North America and then exported, some of them get exported. So if they're built in the States and exported into Canada and Mexico or even Europe, well then they'll be able to have those vehicles built and sold within the United States. And the United States market is, remember, it's the second, it's the second biggest market. And the North American, American market is huge because you've got Canada and Mexico uh, buying and building vehicles. So this could actually be great news. This could save a ton of jobs and essentially, Chrysler has a store, a long history, and it would only be it'd be smart, I think, on BYD's part to still badge them as Chrysler's, because people will want to buy Chrysler's. When you remember, you know, your grandfather, for example, if they bring back Plymouth, I had a Plymouth satellite, essentially kind of like a similar to a, a Roadrunner, but I had a Plymouth satellite. If there's a cool Plymouth vehicle as a, a second vehicle for the family, yeah, I would consider it. Uh, depends what it is, but I would definitely consider it. And I think a lot of people would. And then you could, you know, bad them as BYD when you export them out of the country. So interesting. Uh, some jobs could definitely be saved. BYD has a lot of money because actually currently at 6.8 or 6.9% 6 of BYD is owned by Berkshire Hathaway. And that has un unleashed a wave of money. So BYD is, has access to a ton of money uh, with the purchasing of a portion, a good portion of the company by Berkshire Hathaway. So that's Warren Buffett's company. Warren Buffett knows what he's doing. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if there's some sort of collaboration, partnership, or acquisition 
of Chrysler. It could turn out to, you know, could actually work out quite well because it can make Chrysler prices on their vehicles come way down. They'd be assembled in North America. Those plants could avoid closing or, you know, being really have their employment le le levels really come down. It could really help overall keep those plants running. But generally, manufacturing electric vehicles requires less workers less employees so it's 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 not going to be an all even if this works out it's not an all rosy hunky dory story here but it could save a lot of jobs and you know it's not just the jobs in the factory it's the the transport the the, the trucks the the boats the trains we need this for our economy i think the auto industry is extremely important look britain lost their auto industry for whatever you know for various reasons some political but they lost their their industry and that really changed changed things so we'll leave it at that i'm not going to get into politics in any way but byd is probably coming our way i highly suspect that if that doesn't turn out well maybe it's i believe the grandson of the chrysler founder is actually eyeing to buy back the chrysler brand and that too could actually occur because i don't see stellantis parting with jeep people love their jeeps they're selling a lot of them i don't see stellantis parting with ram in any way whatsoever but parting with chrysler i don't think would cause them any heartache on top of that if it does happen well you'd have an original you'd have a true chrysler man and name behind the brand I wouldn't be surprised if Plymouth came back. And I think there's a lot of people that would be pretty excited about Plymouth coming back. So this, uh, if you want to read on this, you can head over to Mopar Insiders. Robert S. Miller wrote on this. And uh, let's see what happens. One of two things needs to happen. Either the BYD acquisition or Chrysler's the founder of Chrysler, the grandson, also a Mr. Chrysler, buys back the brand, but Stellantis needs to do something, and heck, you've got buyers lined up pretty much. If you go back to Ford when they closed down Mercury, or GM when they closed down many of their brands, Saturn and the, 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 the full list, Pontiac, wouldn't it have been better to sell than to just cut so, and you know, in this is a situation of volume was incredible over at Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram, or even if it was really low on Chrysler because they're essentially just making the Pacifica, but you could still use the factory, retool the factory and build Jeeps there, or whatever model is selling incredible volume. But Ram truck sales have been low because they went against really their base, their, their, their buyers, their consumers. They want trucks, they want vehicles that make noise, look good, sound good, not, not electric vehicles, and they want them at a great price. And the Ram trucks went up in price, must be about 30% that they went up in price, 20, 30%, and they used to have tons of rebates, and then the rebates got completely removed and barely came back. So they're just way more expensive than they used to be. And that's not your Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram buyer. So that's why they're in trouble. Part of this is the CEO of Stellantis's fault, and part of it isn't. But a major part of it they're the part that is, in my opinion, very much on him is that they didn't bring down the prices. One, they brought the prices up way more, kind of ignoring their customer base. And then they didn't, when seeing that inventory was going up and that people weren't buying them, that they had lost touch with their consumer base, they didn't bring the prices back down. And I doubt they're going to bring the prices back down now because they're just looking at, at, at it as, look, we're bleeding money, we're losing money, volume and sales are down. Let's cut jobs. It, it's the simple solution. It's the, it's the foolproof, safe solution to stop the, the leak in the boat, to stop the bleeding. But you're not putting, you're not making the boat better. You're, you're not fit, you know, if you want to succeed, you got to sell more. They're not going to sell more with the current prices. They'll just continue, continue to have poor results in sales. But they won't spend so much building them because they'll build less and people will lose jobs. And that, I think that's, that's, that's unfortunate. 
uh, Rich GT350R, thank you very much for posting charger prices there. Yeah, that's a major issue. 82,000? <laughs> that's, yeah. Who, who are they kidding? So what's this going to lead to? So I'm just going to take a note here where we're at in the show for the when we cut this up. What's this going to lead to? This is going to lead to plans changing. And Ford's got a similar story. We'll get to the full source, full Ford story.